And away goes. I'm here. Ah, this is part two. And of course, we're talking about helmets now. Now that we've talked about the safety gear, um, which is <laughs> uh, people seem to go on about. Um, the hell, you know, does cheaper helmets, does a cheaper helmet, I mean, we're safety. And the answer is, mm, no. No, seriously, no. The one thing is you need to, you need to look out for a couple of things. Obviously, price reflects the helmet in a way um, of these several things. I mean, first of all, you've got to look for that gold emblem basing thing, which I've, I've got one on the back on mine, uh, but I haven't got one on the old one, which I'll show you in a uh, on a separate video, well, it's a separate video on this. I'm gonna get back home today. Uh, there's a couple of things you need to consider when buying a helmet. I mean, more expensive helmets, obviously, you got the very, 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 very cheap, made out of polycarbonate, I think, or what it's called, poly <laughs> plastic. And then you got an upper one. And then you got carbon fibre. Now the difference is, is that the very very cheap plastic stuff only will need that basically it warps and goes off after two years. Uh, then the poly like carbon one, which is the last five years. And then you got carbon fibre, which doesn't that means it doesn't need replacing the helmet doesn't need replacing them. The other thing is of course. Again, the weight of the helmets then changes also. Do you know what I'm going to do to this video <laughs> with a ride back. And it's probably not going to be the same ride back either. Because it's going to probably be raining by the time I come riding back. Yeah, um, uh, like I said, the weight, obviously you got, it's heavier with the cheaper stuff, and then obviously common fibre, <laughs> really extremely light. Um, oh, and the thing is, you either have the heavier one, and you tend to actually do suffer more from uh, fatigue because it's weight on your shoulders, weight on your head. So if you're doing long distances, they always recommend carbon fibre. The other thing is carbon fibre they also believe to be stronger. But it's kind of true because it's carbon fibre. Um, and the other thing then you start also pay for is things like your tints. It, the tinted visor inside that you can flip down like you have on nitro helmets and etc. That's one thing. You can have the um, adjustable pump up breathalyzer guard thing on the nitro ones, which is also, again, makes it more expensive. What's happening here? And then, um, the, the, another one thing that I saw that was really expensive was a shark helmet, which had glow in the dark paint on it. I thought, oh my god, it's so cool, I so want that, it's 300 quid. And the, um, and then there's one more thing. What was the other thing? But this is where the crucial part comes. Actually, the safest helmet of all is the one that actually fits your head. <laughs> that may seem like a lot of gibberish. Um, but. Hi, guys. Uh, this is part two of the 
helmet guide or whether it ends up in two parts or one part. Look at that, nice. Anyway. Right, so. Sit right up on the bike at the minute. Obviously, like I said, I was taking it down for repairs. Right, what I've had done is some new brake pads, a new tyre, uh, the clutch adjusted slightly, a new rev counter bulb, so now I've got rev counter light there. Um, oh, and the head bearings, if they've been replaced, they've been all tightened up. It was only slightly niche, so they're just tightened up, that's it. Right, but the one thing that hasn't been replaced, uh, and I'll have to go this into another video topic about it because it's quite important really, is that the headlight has not been changed. Basically the bulb hasn't been replaced because it's not a bulb, and I'll go into that afterwards, after we've done this video topic. So, right. the helmets, what I was saying is that you should actually go into the store, try helmets on, see what fits your head best. It doesn't matter what the cost is of the helmet, just as long as it perfectly fits in comfort and in size and in shape. If, and this is where it gets really expensive, <coughs> if none of the helmets fit you properly on your head, you will have to, and you and you can, get a custom made uh, in a shell, right? But just for the basic, cheapo plastic, um, customised ones, I've actually heard that someone got had to have one. When I was doing my training, one of the trainers said that, and of other trainers have to have the custom helmet, and he said. Just, just for the moulding of the helmet, it's three hundred pounds. So that's where you can also get terms of cheap head and expensive head. What is going on? It got to today. It was just everywhere. <laughs> Now, it's important to buy one that fits you uh, perfectly, rather than one that's just cheap. If it's uncomfortable, you are not going to like wearing the helmet and it puts off the whole riding experience. Um, and because it does hurt or irritates your head, and I'm going the wrong way, f hang on, I'll turn around. <laughs> It is wanting to rain, but it is a forecast not to rain. Sort of. I'll go around. <coughs> right. Um, the problem I've got right at the minute, if it does rain, is that I've got no extra case. The uh, solid case that I have, the, the waterproof one, has gone missing. I want to say most of it's probably somewhere buried in my bedroom somewhere. And then they can lose shit. Um, and uh, one of the. So, with that in mind, anyway. Right, back to helmets again. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing is you need it to fit round your head properly and round your neck under here. And another way to sort of test, like, the actual tightness of what your head is, is to... If you put on the helmet uh, and just literally fold on, say, straight away, then it's too loose. If it goes on such a way where it's going to go over your head... It's not going to go over your head, obviously, it's too big. If you know, you can't beat your head through whatsoever, that's too big. Uh, there's also a bit where, where it's too big if it's put between pressure spots on your head. That's too big. So what you want is that that happy medium of just not quite being pressure, not quite having pressure spots on your head. For God's sake, I've been indicating all that way. I'm trying to 
trying to push this as long as I can before I take the camera off. Yeah, that's the same problem. Um, wow, anyway. <laughs> You also need to buy one, obviously. Right, so, like I said, you need to buy one that's comfortable and fits your head properly. Um, and then the final thing is, you got the different types of helmets. And when I say that, I mean, I mean the platform, so you've got pl different plastics which I've covered already. And then you've got finally the different actual types of helmets. So you've got full face. Uh, half face. You've got the sort of ones with sort of no guard whatsoever. Uh, for your eyes, no no eye protection on it. And then you've got the flip up sort of helmets that you can also have, um, um, which is. This is where the controversial got the topic comes in because Spicy's obviously sort of proven in the past but he has, you know, when uh, these cars ran into him that he has landed on the pavement the chin all grazed the chin piece but like I said, had, had he not been wearing a full face helmet then um, obviously he would have cracked his chin uh, open mess up his face maybe and this is where it comes in um basically you'll either buy one of these ones without any eye protection whatsoever so you get flies in your face and you'll have to all buy additional uh, eye protection you can have one that was one like one of your first elements which your dad has which is without a chin piece but a full um uh, eye protection guard on it, so you flip the eye protection guard up and down. It's got no chain piece. You've got the uh, full face one, which I have, um, which obviously it means you can't flip this up at all. Um, it's fixed, but at least it's protecting all your chin and everything and your face. Um, <coughs> and then finally, you got the flip up ones, which when they're actually closed, it's ex exactly like a full face helmet. Um, obviously the, full, the flip up ones are actually quite expensive, they usually double the cost of um, any normal any normal full face helmet, so um, most people who have the flip up ones are there for, at that, they really are just there for a pleasure of having to get open. The idea of having the flip face obviously ones is obviously in the summer when it's very 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 hot is so your face can breathe and be open to the elements but as I said and it make kind of sense what do you <laughs> what do you put first uh risking having an accident and bring your whole face or just not being able to sort of not, is that my mum so yeah well And this is so much more. I gotta split this into two topics as well. And it's quite a long video, just explaining bloody helmets. <coughs> um, so when it comes down to cost, basically the cost sort of involves what the um a couple of things. Um, what the paint is, what the helmet's actually made out of what type of helmet it is, what additional features like tinted guards, ex uh, tinted... <laughs> built in. No, you saw that then. Ah, it was! Ah, it was! Ah! I know they've got a fly in it as well. Oh, that appears to be dead. Oh. Yeah, the tinted... Flip down um, integrated sun visors, and uh, uh, they and um, that's it really. They what contradict the cost. 
In other words, you could have either what I've got, which is a cheap head anyway. This is a shark helmet. And if they cheap this one was free. Now, oh, I, this is where I'll go into the final bit, which is should you buy a used helmet, which is um, most people say no. And generally the reason is literally you don't know if that helmet has hit the ground. You don't know what, um, whether it's been properly looked after. You don't know anything. Um, but this, I this was my mate who's, who actually now has my helmet. He basically his dad got a, mo uh, a I think it was a Kawasaki Eliminator uh, 750, and he went on about it with his dad when he was about 13 and 14. Had this helmet and it fitted him at the time, but he only ever went out with his dad about six times. And basically, the helmet was then kept in its case um, inside uh, inside the house all the time. So I know he's been, and that's why I've, I know you today. When uh, the so that's why I'm using it. My red one, old one, wasn't obviously looked after very well anyway. And I didn't really look after my helmets properly. Um, I make sure just not to hit them. But other than that, when it comes to washing devices and keep taking care, of, uh, like keeping the actual helmet clean, never do that. I just make sure that nothing sort of hits the helmet if I can. Um, although occasionally it's really got flies twatting it and stones twatting it. <coughs> um, uh, the final thing is obviously taking care of the actual damn helmets. Um, like, <laughs> that's why you want to keep your helmet for the rest of your life or not. Alright, no. Um, obviously in my video I showed you my red helmet and my blue helmet. This blue one. I now use. Basically, actually, apart from the scratches being called by rolling back in the top box, which is I want it really because the top box is supposed to protect your helmet. Basically, keeping it bloody, it's up to you really, but so long, there's a couple of things, um, so long as you don't drop it, it's a one drop deal, and a simple reason is. Even though you may drop it and it may look fine on the outside, it may crack the inner shell, which is there to protect you and absorb impact on the inside. Um, you may not know that. The other thing is, also keeping it clean, keeping the visor clean, keeping the helmet clean is up to you, really. But that doesn't really affect the helmet. Um, obviously the visor needs to be clean so you can see. But I haven't cleaned it. So I never see. Oh I'm kidding, I do see. I do see. No, I just guess like a blind man. Right, after that long and lengthy helmet topic, I'll now see you guys later. Now, I really do think I've covered everything in the helmets. Uh, if I haven't and I forgot, just leave a comment below. Uh, and you can leave any other comment below, whether you actually look after your helmet or how well your helmets last for. I mean, I generally last mine for about a year, two years. That's it, really. And like I said, I buy cheap. Oh, wands. I do want a... Um, and don't forget to leave your views on, maybe, if you want to. Spend time. On helmets yourself. Or just go on Splice's videos and anyone else's videos. Plus you. <laughs> I'll go and comment on theirs as well. <coughs> So I'll see you guys later, and don't forget to ride safe. Oh, and by the way, wait!
yeah make sure you keep your tires <laughs> make sure they're not worn out and your brakes aren't worn out so I'll uh, see you guys later bye bye